Well, hello and welcome to another episode of More Perfect Marketing. It's David Bear here. And, you know, I spent a lot of time talking with business owners and, and marketers, actually, about how they define the word marketing. I've been doing this for around three decades now, and there's a lot of different definitions, a little different understandings of what marketing actually is. You know, the, the typical business owner thinks that marketing is advertising, right? There's a broader definition, and perhaps I personally use the broadest definition of them all, which is any activity that is designed to generate revenue in your business can fall under marketing. That's how I see it, at least. Today's guest has a, a different take on what marketing is or how to define marketing. And in fact, he uses very, very smartly, by the way, um, marketing to market an idea of non-marketing or what he calls anti-marketing. I'm, I'm really excited to dig into this. Um, I'm, I'm speaking today across the pond, as it were. And actually, you you went to you went to school in the UK, didn't you? So so you know exactly. you know that reference, the pond, right? Um, exactly. I'm talking to uh, Tiago Faria, who is joining me from Lisbon, Portugal, or is it Lisboa? Lisboa, Lisboa. Okay, I <laughs> see. I don't. I'm not even gonna. I was gonna like you know try to welcome you on by saying something like you know Tudo Bem or something like that, and I know yeah, that I would, awesome. I wouldn't even pronounce that correctly. <laughs> Man, the effort is all that counts. <laughs> so, Tiago, welcome. And, and I, I wonder if you can start by sort of giving me your definition of what you think marketing actually is, because then we're going to talk about this anti-marketing concept. Yeah, I think I think you are spot on, um, David, about the uh, the fact that it's um, a, a specific set of activities that we do in order to put some eyeballs in whatever we are trying to promote, produce. Uh, and then the objective of marketing is to, okay, get the attention of those people and then make them do some sort of action, some sort of response, right? To approach them to our world. And that can be multiple things. Right? It could be clicking a link, could be a booking a call, could be buying something. Um, but I, th I think to me, it's basically the, the capturing the attention of our specific audience, our target audience that we want to talk to specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, regarding the anti-marketing, <laughs> of course, I'm not anti-marketing. I love marketing. It's my my life. My, <laughs> I, I'm obsessed by it. Um, it it's mostly to uh, kind of point the finger to the, the fact that whenever we're starting out or if we are in the beginning stages of our business, we are bombarded by tons of messages, right? From mm -hmm. all the internet marketing gurus, all, uh, all those amazing celebrities that teach us many things, of course, but uh, they also confuse us a bit by... Tactics, right? Very specific tactics that uh, might be overly complex for people starting out or might distract us. The famous shiny objects that uh, uh, we believe that the more complex the thing is, the easier the, it will be probably just a quick button and then magically everything will uh, appear. But uh, it's a trap, right? I, I was in that trap for three years, just trying different tactics. We are one funnel away and then you're one TikTok away and <laughs> you are juggling with those things and it's a trap and it's an addiction that you you might get into uh, and then you try something it doesn't work immediately you, you jump to the other one and you never allow yourself to reach the full potential that one of those strategies simple yeah. strategies that you could follow deeply and for long periods of time would allow you to to reach uh, certain levels so um, yeah that is my uh, and and i believe i purely believe that you already have everything you need in your world in order to start and grow a uh, very fun and sustainable business uh, by tapping into, you know, your established relationships, the, whatever you already have, it's much easier for you to, if you, if you want to earn some cash right now and you want to reach your first five to 10 K per month, it's, it doesn't make sense for you to pursue new relationships. That's the the long and complex way to make money with the ads, the funnels, the cold emailing, et cetera. Uh, so, but if you're looking for money now, you should, Think about what you already have in your world. Be grateful for what you have. It's just something we don't think about. Uh, but so who are they? It could be your customer list, clients you've already worked with in the past, people you've had sales calls with, leads. It could be also your uh, contacts. Uh, you look at your friends list, your uh, family, even colleagues, people you've worked with, <laughs> LinkedIn connections. And then your audience. Most of us already have some sort of audience, right? So it can be email sub list subscribers, social media followers. Um, and uh, these people around you that you already have established relationships, they might not necessarily be the ones who give us the money immediately, 
but they can also help us get the money, right? Uh, we discussed it offline, the, the power of referral that we could, which we could discuss a bit later on. Um, and if, I don't know if you want me to expand a bit long. A bit yeah, more I want to, I want to dig into this in, in a, in a moment, but I want to circle back to a point that you made because of this, the sh shiny object idea, right? And I think yeah. that in inherent in the way that we think about marketing, whatever that might mean to someone, it's often around one tactic or another, one avenue or another. And the, the problem that I see, I, I spend a lot of my time working with marketing professionals who lack an understanding of marketing beyond the particular narrow area that they happen to specialize in when it comes to marketing. And so I think universally we have a challenge when it comes to the way that businesses and marketers talk about how do you market because there isn't really a um, tradition of stepping back from this question and and thinking about it in the broadest sense of what is appropriate for this business at this moment in time, as you've described, you know, a new business trying to get established and, and using the assets it has, right? Yeah. And instead, what happens is a business goes, all right, how do I market? Well, I saw an ad for this, or I saw a webinar for that, or I or I I was introduced to a person who's a marketing professional, and they sold me the one thing that they sell. And as a result, our our tradition is really about buying or engaging in marketing activities through tactics. And so I think it, there's just a universal problem with the structure of the way that marketing is bought and sold and engaged with. And that's really, I think, a, a contributing factor to what you're talking about. But really, it sounds like the solution that you're co coming to is, well, let's really look at what's your situation and what is appropriate for where you are at this moment in time. Is, am I getting that right? Yeah, exactly. And also think about yeah, tactics. Absolutely co correct what you're saying. I agree uh, 100%. Um, and think about more about the overall strategy, right? Uh, which which is the basis of your your podcast. And I think we should all um, we should always look back at the what the timeless strategies that work always in business in, in the hundred years ago, right? That uh, are timeless because they no matter what platform you you use, it will uh, will always work consistently if you just follow some specific simple a simple plan a simple way of approaching things and, and for me it all starts with being very clear on who you're serving right that's the basis mm -hmm. basics of it all that simplifies your whole life <laughs> uh, who is the person the problem um because if you start being more targeted like that uh, you understand exactly who you're talking to right and you know exactly who you want to uh, uh, attract the attention of um and in my approach of my anti-marketing approach it all starts with you actually having conversations with people, talking to people. Instead of us marketers being in our, our own mind and behind our computers, <laughs> actually approach 5, 10, 15 people that you know is in your uh, target audience and ask them questions simply like, oh, what are your main frustrations? What are your day-to-day -day look like? Uh, what are you struggling with? Um, how does it look like? What do you want to achieve? Um, because if we have those conversations and we collect those emotional words that people are using, they're basically telling you what they want. They're basically telling what you what, what they want you to create and how you want to communicate, how how they want you to communicate with them, right? Uh, so, for my my strategic approach of anti marketing is exactly that: tap to your current contacts, interview them, the ones that make sense, of course. Extract the the uh, pain points and the goals and the emotional words that they use, and create the offer around that instead of you creating on your mind and then figuring out if people want it or not. No. Create something that people already want. The market is asking you for that, um, which makes uh, things so much easier, right? It's uh, you don't need to be a copywriter. <laughs> yeah. Can, can you just just place. for a moment here um, clarify what you mean by offer? It's it's a term that ah, you yes, and I sorry. understand implicitly, but for the average you know service provider out there, they don't think in terms of an offer. So what might an offer look like or entail based on the scenario that you've just described? Yes, it, basically, it's the way you position, the way you offer your service, your programs, whatever you have to offer, um, and and you, the way you position it is by 
instead of you saying i am a copywriter or i am a, i don't know so some some sort of profession that we all by tendency have the 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 the, the tendency to say that i'm a coach or i'm a generic coach or whatever mm -hmm. uh instead of that you you tap into the words that people uh, uh use whatever the problems that you feel that they have and you package your the offer in the in the way that the, it resonates with the person that is talking to you that is uh, listening to what you have to offer um uh, uh, reflecting exactly what the market wants and you position yourself as someone that has an answer to a specific problem that a person is having um i think that's the way you, that's an offer is basically the way you position yourself you know, mm -hmm. in the position the the whatever your service is, is being offered I, I think that there's, you know, obviously ways to extend that too in terms of the dialing in how to distinguish what you're doing in in your business from everybody else because it is so finely tuned for that specific audience. And so the what you include or the how what you call it, even if it's the same thing that you did before, to to be able to, you know, make it resonate with that that specific audience in a way that they go wow this is meant exactly for me yes exactly yeah basically pinpointing okay uh, my uh, service solves this specific problem and this is the outcome that uh, you will have after you work with me right um and uh and you have to think strategically about okay we need to find a, an urgent problem that people have that they want to solve right now there has, there has to be a reason to buy right now Otherwise, people tend to procrastinate and they think that uh, well, one day I'll I'll think about that that issue. Yeah. And an ex a good example would be like uh, um, if you're a, a fitness fitness coach, for example, and you say, oh, I'll help you lose 10 kilos, 10, 10 pounds in the next <laughs> uh, three, three weeks or something like that. Um, but that is something that people already heard many times that um, doesn't, it doesn't make them move anymore. They tried many options before, nothing worked. And it's already something, message that comes into one ear, leaves on the other. So you need to think about what is, okay, what is the problem that you want to solve urgently right now? Uh, for example, you can tap into the, well, the back pain that they are suffering due to the uh, their, their weight or the knee problems that doesn't let them, let them go upstairs. And, uh, you know, think about how it is affecting their life nowadays, the symptoms that they, that keeps them awake <laughs> at night. And then we position our offer, the way we communicate what we serve around that specific symptom, that problem the person is having and, and you tell her exactly what she wants to achieve and that the only solution, the only viable solution will be through your services or, or programs. So I want to double back on two things that I heard you say, because I think they're, they're really important for our listeners to hear. The first one is listen to the way that the, the people that you're interviewing talk about that situation, because the, the language that they use is very different necessarily from the, the language yeah. that you as a professional might use. And then the second thing you talked about symptoms and the thing that they recognize is the symptom, not necessarily you as the, again, the professional know what's re the real problem or the root, the root cause, cause. Yeah. but they're not necessarily aware of that yet. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and that's a natural tendency whether we have, it's normal. <laughs> we are completely involved in our own expertise. We're biased. Uh, and and we tend to communicate like our our frameworks or our, yeah the root causes, and that doesn't resonate with the people that are not prepared. They don't, they're not aware of it. So if they're not aware of it, they will not be you know they don't feel connected with it. They won't uh, they won't think it's you're talking to them right. You're talking to someone else in a different level or something else. So, so and and we need, we need to reach that level in order to capture the attention of of, of, the, of the persons. Um, uh, and, and from there on, then after you, the person starts working with you, you can deal with all the root causes and all your frameworks, et cetera. But before that happens, there needs to have a, there needs to be a connection, um, um, that makes the person jump in, you know, and yeah. take a decision to, to buy now. So, uh, you know, this, this is something that, uh, as I said earlier, most business owners don't know enough about marketing to, to really appreciate what we've just been talking about. Many marketers don't, and I'm curious how you arrived at sort of understanding this. Now you you have a background in marketing. You've you've worked in in branding. You've worked in sort of media planning. You did work for um, a major corporation that you may or may not choose to reveal in a moment um, for eight years, and uh, and then 
somehow you found yourself in a place where you needed to teach yourself or or relearn or learn a different variation on what marketing actually is. And I wonder if you might walk us through that journey of how how you got to where you are on this. Yeah, so uh, as you said, I was working to a massive corporation, uh, Google, uh, for eight years. I was uh, working in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, I had a blast, of course. I, I learned a ton. It was an amazing experience. I interacted with some of the biggest companies in Europe, at least. Um, uh, but uh, I, I was feeling very limited by just one product, the Google Ads, um, and just just being feeding the big corporations and having a boss nagging my nerves. I, I immediately felt that I was psychologically unemployable. Uh, and uh, yeah, slowly I, I, I figured out I needed to to to, to follow my own path. Um, and then in 2019, I came back to Portugal. Uh, and yeah, of course, I hit against a brick wall uh, because I was complicating my life too much. I was using those st uh, st strategies and tactics from uh, huge corporations, trying to apply to my own small, tiny little start startup business and to my clients. And it, it was, well, of course, it wouldn't work because... Uh, we need you need to go through a, a certain process in order to you for you to reach the the level of okay I'm ready to invest in funnels and ads etc. Um, because while until you don't have a, a proven offer like we talked about mm -hmm. <laughs> something that you already know consistently you can attract people the, people buy it and then you consistently generate results uh, and until you have a, a very well calculated like calculated lifetime value. Uh, it's it's uh, just uh, a big mistake to to throw money at ads and it's just going to be a waste of money. Uh, so I I yeah for three years I was in that in that game <laughs> struggling, um, falling into all the traps and testing different things, lots of different things that didn't work immediately. So I jumped to another one, and uh, after three years I decided okay I need to do something about this. Um, and the best thing to do is always to ask someone that already went through that path, uh, uh, the, the the path that you want to pursue. And uh, just uh, work with a mentor. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I worked with Terry Dean. He's uh, one of the oh, sure. marketing dinosaurs. Yeah, down, down in Florida. Yeah, sure. Yes, mm -hmm. you know him also. Yep. Um, and he helped me you know, clarify my message. Who am I actually targeting targeting, and uh, talking to? And simplify my approach. Exactly that. Remove all the distractions. Okay, what is your, you know, whatever I have been working with you about in the past. Well, what are the main things that are, how can we simplify this uh, as much as possible for you and for your clients? And I got inspired by... Uh, Mr. J. Abraham, <laughs> getting yep. everything you can out of all you've got. Yeah, now my last focus was all you've got. So okay, this is the this is the path. Uh, like the established relationships is the easiest way for you to, you know, grow a sustainable business, uh, because it's people that you already know and they already know you, like and trust you at some point, um, and you can uh, very easily craft an offer based on what the, your people uh, tell you. You know, the, you already certainly have people in your niche around you. Uh, and then you can go back to them and basically say, oh, look, I created this offer uh, that solves the problem you told me you had. What do you think about it? Is it, is it what's your opinion around it? And uh, most likely you'll get your first clients just by that small interaction you have with them. And then for those people that don't need your offer right now, but are in your network, they all, everyone needs something. Everyone needs money. You know, <laughs> It's something that mm -hmm. uh, most people will be more happily, more than happy to, to, uh, to help you out. And uh, people love to help people that they know. So you can create a, a, a referral program around your new offer and you simply just tap into your network and uh, create your own small sales team uh, uh, of people that are will happily send you leads. Um, and yeah, with, with this simple approach, um, it made my life much easier and my clients' lives easier. So you, you've been talking mostly about getting a new business or a new idea or new offer up and running. And I wonder how you can apply this method to an established business, right? Somebody who's seeing some success, but maybe it's not consistent or they're not, uh, or, or they have been jumping from tactic to tactic to tactic. They're, they're, you know, they've got clients they're serving, but they're not really seeing the consistency. How does this apply in that scenario? Yeah, it, it's all most likely applicable if you do the work of, you know, okay, making a list of your established relationships. <laughs> it's something we tend to not do. We we keep focusing on new clients, new clients, mm -hmm. the cold audiences. But to, even established uh, businesses will even work much better because you have an even bigger network of people that know, like, and trust you. So for sure, you have clients that you work with. If they already bought what you have, you can create something else that they, that, you know, that uh, that they didn't buy from you. Some 
you already probably helped them solve one problem, but then whenever you solve uh, someone one problem, it creates new problems, right? And maybe yeah. you didn't satisfy those new issues that people might have. Uh, and if you don't create something for them, they will look around for <laughs> other options. Uh, so it's, it's an easy way for you to interview your old clients and ask simply, okay, what what else do you need? You know, I help you do this. Um, you you told me you read, uh, it was an amazing amazing accomplishment for you. What else do you need? Um, and then you just by interviewing your old clients, you can already have ideas of additional offers you can create, additional services you can provide, uh, more advanced, more more profound. Um, and uh, and and then again, using the referrals in a more proactive and uh, systematic way. Just reach out to everyone around you, your contacts, your network, uh, and uh, simply ask, do you know anyone that will be interested in this? I actually have a referral uh, commission fee that I can, uh, can, I can pay out. And uh, uh, simply just gaining the habit of consistently reaching out to your established relationships. It's something that most people, I'm sure most people don't do at a, at a consistent basis. Uh, and uh, it, it's a, an amazing experience to go through for any kind of business. Uh, if you make it uh, a habit, a, a systematic a system, basically. But, yes. Uh, you know. Excellent. I, I'm I'm curious. So so you are um, in Portugal. I I asked you uh, um, before we hit record about you know I was observing on your website and and on LinkedIn that that a lot of the focus is in Portuguese right now. And um, there's two major com- countries in the world that I know. There's a lot of people speaking Portuguese, but outside of that, right. um, uh, I'm curious to understand the, from your perspective, differences between the way that businesses and consumers operate in sort of the North America and a little bit in the UK structure. But as you get onto the continent of Europe, in, in my experience, the types of things that you're talking about are not as common, less embraced, and certainly the cult- culturally, um, there it, it's it's primitive is the wrong word, but a little it has not been fully incorporated into the way that businesses operate. And I'm I'm curious to hear your observation of sort of the um, delicacy of this scenario that you're talking about, depending on where you're conducting your business. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's many differences that I could um, find out already. Um, and one of them is uh, the fact that the consumers, maybe here in Portugal, Spain, these uh, central southern countries in, in Europe, I think I believe people are a bit more skeptical and more, um, I would say, even uh, risk averse about investing online. That's one big obstacle already. But uh, here in Portugal, spe- especially, uh, paying with a credit card is something that people are not used to. They're afraid of fraud, afraid of something might happen. Uh, so even that, that's that, that's immediately a big difference on uh, on the way that people are, you know, uh, approaching this kind of offer. They they need much more direct content with you, contact with you. It's not it's not uh, it's a bit less of a sending a people to a sales page and just hoping that they will purchase. <laughs> uh, people here have, have have this feeling that uh, need a bit more contact, a bit more knowing you more deeply. Uh, they're more skeptical by nature, um, so that's that's the main difference I I, I see in, the, in between the, the U.S. market and the, the more the I guess actually the English speaking markets, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and here the local market. Yeah, and and the reason I bring this up because I think it's very much tied to the point you were making earlier about interviewing the marketplace, interviewing prospects, really understanding the total environment that you're operating your business in. And this is a piece of it. What is the the cultural acceptance of the the framework that you are um, giving us? In some places, you can be certainly in North America. We have a reputation for being much more pushy and aggressive when it comes to moving that relationship forward toward a sale than in other parts of the world. And so, f- making sure that you're working through your process, your framework in a way that is going to be acceptable in order to see this, to realize the benefit on the, on the other side. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one, one way of getting that data is again, by interviewing people <laughs> to figure out what are the main objections people might have around the way you position yourself, the way you offer, well, or, or the, the, the service that you're providing, what are the main difficulties, where, where will people usually, uh, 
find a big obstacle that doesn't allow them to accept working or continue working with you. Um, yeah, def definitely the, the, the questions that uh, uh, those interviews will ar arise um, are something that you should adapt uh, definitely for, to, for, for the way you communicate with your market. So take the objections people might have and use them by design in your offer in your the way you you promote yourself I'm always using the word offer <laughs> but mm -hmm. the way you position your your user services uh, so including those main objections people might have and use them proactively in the way you communicate uh, and to you know surpass those uh, those potential objections by the way you, you you describe your services or including a specific service additional service to your to your the way you promote it um but yeah, definitely, this is important for you to know what would be the main obstacles and objections. Yeah. So uh, to that end, I want to actually talk a little bit about the the work that you do and the the types of clients you serve. Um, I, I I jumped over to your website, and thanks to your former employer, I can just click on translate <laughs> and and see uh, that you know at the at the top you have a. Um, a free giveaway PDF that talks about how to package one's knowledge and their experience in into, you know, a program or into an offer that is specifically designed for that ideal client. So very much consistent with what we've just been talking about. Mm -hmm. What is it that that you are ultimately um, helping someone do, and who are you helping, and 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 what is the type of work that you're engaging in with them? Yeah, so I'm I'm focused mainly on uh, um, people that work in the help industry, so consultants, uh, coaches, service providers that are charging or willing to charge high tickets for their services, uh, and that are looking for a simple way to, you know, uncover and find your their ideal clients, your dream clients that are willing to pay a high ticket as well in their own world. So, like we discussed here, the contact lists, your audience, the uh, um, the network that you have. Um, in, in basically by by doing what we described here, like yeah. choosing a very specific niche, interviewing people in that area, craft a new service, a new offer that exactly answers the what people uh, need and want, and then simply interviewing, um, reaching out to your current contacts, going back to the people you interviewed, ask them if they are interested in it. If they're not, ask who else that would be interested in, in in their service. And then also, if you have social media, I love to do this the kind of uh, um, hand raising posts where you simply ask hey i'm looking for five people who would be interested in this specific uh, outcome mm -hmm. if you're this kind of person just let me know send me a message or comment below and it unlocks a, a way for you to interact with people again talking to people <laughs> it's a big pattern here uh, and then you can uncover what is the main what it was what, what is the problem that pers the person is, is facing qualify see if it makes sense for you to work with them and then simply offer something okay i can help you do you want help with that i have this specific offer service etc so there's always a way for you to tap into your network and uh, extract extract the, the ideal clients. I'm, I'm sure that if you have at least 2,000 people in your audience, there are three to seven people that are ready to buy right now. The the new offer that you probably never communicated in a specific way before. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, uh, there are people around you for sure that are, you can unlock. So for, for, for the clients you serve, we, we talked about the difference between sort of what you as a as a service provider or professional know is the root cause of a problem or the real problem what are the symptoms that that people who you can can help what are they they aware of right now in their world that that they're trying to address yeah so most most of the companies that i've worked with that uh, uh, are my ideal clients they usually are overly dependent on passive word of mouth like something that I don't promote proactively, and they're afraid that they will dry out, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and and, uh, and they're they're uh, a bit tired of starting the, the a month from zero again. Like okay, a new month, a new month from zero, um, and they've been resorting to digital marketing services, or bought courses, or worked with a freelancer, uh, or bought a course from all those those gurus that teach you tactics, right? That uh, that are not uh, probably adjusted to you. Um, and yes, and they've been they've been uh, trying to find a way to consistently find a simple way to extract ideal clients from what they they have in their own world. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it's exactly the, the kind of person that I, that I love to help and that I'm uh, usually happiest and uh, <laughs> and uh, give my best. 
Yeah. And, and by the way, having spent a lot of time in the space that you operate in, I, I see what you're describing all the time, right? That, that there's, there's a frustration about inconsistency. There's, you know, a, a, a lack of appreciation for the, I always have to, you know, I always have to be out there. I, my, I'm doing, you know, air quotes marketing right now. Wow, Zoom oh. <laughs> just did some weird thing when I did that. I, I wasn't expecting uh, confetti to fall confetti. Uh, when, when I did my air quotes there. Um, for those of you who are listening, um, you'll just have to head over to YouTube to find out what just <laughs> happened. Uh, and the, 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 the challenge is that very often businesses aren't really clear on what's missing from the scenario that, that, you're, that you're describing. And so uh, often they, they don't recognize what the problem is but as much a, as as much as they do things aren't working and i'm not sure what and so that's that's the one little hurdle that i think often has to occur regardless of the business whether it's you know your business tiago or or any service provider that we have to figure out how to bridge that gap between what they're hyper aware of and what we're aware the problem you know might be and so um it's it's great that you're you're able to step in and help you know, um, uh, professionals identify those things and then build a systematic approach to address it and and uh, and rectify the situation. Yeah, because business doesn't have to be complicated. We tend to overly complicate things, and uh, uh, I don't know why. It's a natural tendency people have. <laughs> we believe that the more complex, the, the more efficient will be or the easiest will be. But no, if we just follow a simple plan and do it consistently day by day, by day, day, by day and we are... Actually, I follow a plan that is very easy to 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 keep up with. I, I only focus on three things per day, like one thing per marketing. I need to do something for marketing. I need to do one thing for sales to convert people to my own world. And also I need to do something to, about the delivery, how I'm uh, I'm helping my clients, how I can improve it the way uh, they... I need to generate results, basically win the results business. And if, we tend to forget also about this part of the delivery. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because if we don't regenerate results, people are not going to be happy. There won't be testimonials. There will be uh, uh, client success success stories. And um, I, I believe that if we focus on something that is simple, just like what I described here, we can do it consistently for long periods of time. And even if things don't start happening immediately, at least we have something simple to 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 figure out and do uh, do that day good in a good way and uh, the day is done it's perfect I, I feel accomplished i'm not worried about what it, what might come um and that's a secret i think for me to to just keep going even when when things were not not growing like i wanted um it it really helps to to have a simple path because being an entrepreneur is already so complicated you need to learn so many skills. <laughs> and if you put on top of it, like a very complicated uh, tactic and, and strategy, it, it's not necessary. Uh, yeah. In my opinion. Indeed. And so you, you said those three things um, we're, we're uh, working on at least one, maybe two of those right now. Uh, this, the, the marketing and the, and the, and the sales piece. And, and to that end um, I'd love to make sure that before you, leave today that folks know where they can find you should they want to know a more about you and b more about what you might be able to help them accomplish yes david exactly so uh as i told you i'm in the beginning stages of internationalizing my brand so my website is still in portuguese but thanks to google you can lurk me at tiagofaria.pt that's t-i-a-g-o-f-a-r-i-a.pt for portugal um, and if you want to have a quick chat with me, uh, uh, just there's a, on the top right corner, there's a button to to book a free uh, free call. I love to meet new people in this area, so, so it's my favorite thing to do. And we can do a brainstorm. We can um, diagnose whatever you have in your own world already. See if we could uncover something. Um, or if you want to ask any questions, uh, just send me an email at tiago at tiagofari.pt. Excellent. And uh, yes, uh, it is easy, clean website, easy to navigate. And um, <laughs> if if they were to opt in and, and uh, request the uh, the free PDF that you offer as well, oh, is yeah. that delivered in English or only? That's English? still not in English. That's it on English. Let's better have a chat. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Tiago Faria, thank you so very much. This is uh, this has been a fabulous conversation. I really appreciate you making time for uh, for us to get together. Thank you, David. It was a true honor to be here. I hope something, uh, someone can take something out of this conversation yes. today and, uh, and uh, they can implement. That's the key, implement something. 
That's absolutely, I absolutely. I I, uh, I think there's some great um, and important foundational stuff we covered here uh-huh. today that I think a lot of people um, need to hear or need to be reminded of, um, or in many cases, introduced to you for the first time. And so folks, if you mm-hmm. know someone who could benefit from listening to today's conversation, please send them our way. In the meantime, my name is David Bear, and you have been listening to more Perfect Marketing. We'll see you again here soon. Bye-bye.